NASA is ramping up efforts to find alternatives to the aging ISS. This push is opening the door for commercial space station concepts from companies like Northrop Grumman, Blue Origin, Vast, Axiom Space, Think Orbital, and Sierra Space. Sounds exciting, right? But there's more. Another major player is looking to enter the scene. Enter SpaceX, famous for its strong safety record and bold yet achievable ideas. Their ambitious Starship project is being designed for deep space missions, but it could also play a big role in low Earth orbit. So, with all its unique features, what could a Starship space station actually look like? Find out in today's episode of TechMap. We know that the International Space Station is dying, and not like, someday in the distant future, dying. More like, we should probably start saying our goodbyes now, dying. Some experts, including Elon Musk, think we shouldn't even wait until 2030, which is the current retirement plan. Instead, try 2027. That's two years from now. So what's going on up there? Picture this. After two and a half decades in space, the ISS is showing its age like an old car with duct tape on the bumper and a weird rattle no one can fix. There are cracks, actual cracks in some of the modules. Coolant leaks, air leaks. Yeah, not exactly the kind of thing you want happening in a place with no atmosphere outside. One repeat offender, the Russian-built Zvezda service module especially this tunnel-like part that connects the docking port to the rest of the ship. That area has been leaking since 2019. Engineers think the problem might be stress fractures or issues with the welds. But here's the kicker. This part of the station is basically the life support HQ. Oxygen, water, crew quarters, you name it. Oh, and just recently, there was a weird chemical smell on board, kind of like spray paint or something toxic. Turns out it came from a freshly arrived Russian cargo ship, Progress MS-29, docked at the Poisk module. Crew spotted little droplets floating around, freaked out, as you would, and sealed the hatch immediately to keep whatever it was contained. Now, if all that weren't enough, there's the ever-present threat of space junk. Little pieces of metal and debris are flying around Earth at mind-blowing speeds. And sometimes, they come way too close for comfort. The ISS has had to dodge this stuff more than once, and each time feels like threading a needle with your life on the line. Here's a fun fact. The ISS is basically running on tech from the 1980s and 90s. That's like trying to run a modern smart home on a Windows 95 computer. It's so outdated that astronauts often refer to it as a floating plumbing depot. And honestly, that's not even an exaggeration. The station's plumbing is a mess of pipes and hoses that handle everything from water circulation to urine recycling. Yep, they drink filtered pee, to ammonia-based cooling. It works, but only just. Maintenance is constant. Imagine having to fix leaks or unclog waste systems in zero gravity. Fun, right? That's why modern space companies are going a different route. Check this out. Some future stations are going full comfort mode. The Vast Company, for example, is designing inflatable modules like Haven 1, with beds that gently hug you like a weighted blanket. Because in space, you kind of just float around when you sleep. Some ISS astronauts actually wedge themselves into cabinets to feel anchored. Seriously. And while the ISS's interior feels more like a cramped submarine, tubular hallways, tight quarters, and everything designed for maximum efficiency, new habitats aim to feel more like, well, a home. More space, more privacy, more peace of mind. Like SpaceX's Starship, which is expected to offer bigger living areas, room to stretch out. Now, originally, Starship was designed to carry lots of people on crazy long trips through deep space. We're talking months in a metal tube on the way to Mars. So from the beginning, comfort and livability weren't optional. They were baked into the design. But here's the twist. If this thing can keep a crew alive and happy on an eight-month journey to Mars, then imagine how overqualified it is to just hang out in low Earth orbit. Like, it would be luxury up there. And that brings us to Starship's killer feature, size. This rocket is huge, like absurdly huge. On camera, people crawling on it during tests look like ants. 
and if you've ever seen that frosty outer layer when the tanks are full of cryofuel, everything above that is basically empty space. That's your living room in orbit. Right now, the main living space is in the upper section, the payload bay and nose cone, measuring 18 meters in height and 9 meters in width. It gives you about 1,000 cubic meters of volume. That's actually a bit more than the entire ISS, which clocks in at 935 cubic meters. So yeah, one starship is already doing more than the entire orbiting lab we've had for decades. With that kind of volume, people have started dreaming big. We're talking about a six-floor layout like a vertical condo in space. One deck could be for storage and cargo, another for growing plants and grabbing dinner, throw in a gym, crew quarters, common areas and mission control, and suddenly you're not just surviving in space, you're living. But here's the catch. Starship was designed to land upright like a rocket on the moon or Mars. So a vertical layout makes sense if you've got gravity pulling you down. Not so much in microgravity where up and down are just concepts. So if Starship becomes a permanent station in orbit, the layout shifts. Picture something more like a submarine with long horizontal decks stretching from the nose to the tail. Submarines with a hull this wide, about nine meters, usually fit three decks, so we could do the same here. It's like turning the rocket sideways and filling it with crew pods, labs, maybe even a rec room or two. But here's where it gets really wild. Most of Starship's interior is taken up by giant fuel tanks. That makes sense for launch missions, but if SpaceX decides to remove or repurpose those tanks, boom, you unlock a massive amount of space. A fully converted Starship, stripped of its tanks and turned into a habitat, could offer 3,000 cubic meters of interior volume. That's three times bigger than the ISS. You could fit hundreds of people in there. And that's just the current version. Future Starship variants, like the rumored version 3, could stretch up to 70 meters long. That could boost the internal volume to around 4,400 cubic meters. We're talking full-scale orbiting cities, labs, workshops, greenhouses, zero-gravity basketball courts, who knows? So here's the million-dollar question. Do you think SpaceX could actually pull this off? Strip out those tanks? Turn Starship into a floating megabase? Personally, I think it's only a matter of time. But let me know what you think down in the comments. And hey, if you're as hyped about humanity's future in space as I am, hit that like button and buckle up. We're just getting started. All right, space fans, if you thought Starship was just cool because it's huge and reusable, you haven't even heard the best part yet. Let's talk materials, money, and why this rocket might just be the ultimate building block for humanity's first real home in space. So first up, materials. The ISS, it's made mostly of aluminum. Pretty standard, right? Lightweight, strong, but not exactly built for the cosmic wilderness. In contrast, Starship is made of stainless steel, and that changes everything. Steel is tough, like stand up to micrometeoroids, radiation, and insane temperature swings. Tough. It's more corrosion resistant, easier to repair, and way more durable long term. That means your habitat stays safer, longer, and you're not constantly doing space patchwork just to keep the air in. Plus, it's cheap. SpaceX isn't just building better, they're building smarter and cheaper. Now let's talk money, because this part is wild. Elon Musk says a single Starship launch could cost under $10 million. Some estimates say $20 million tops. And even that is practically nothing when you consider that the ISS cost over $150 billion to build and maintain. That's billion. With a B. So here's the fun idea. If launching one Starship is that cheap, why not launch 20? Imagine linking them all together in a big rotating ring, like something out of a sci-fi movie. You'd get artificial gravity, a ton of living space, and let's be honest, the coolest human structure ever built. Funny enough, NASA actually considered this idea years ago. They wanted to turn the space shuttle's big orange hydrogen tank into a ring station. But that tank, it was just a giant thermos. 
Starship is the full package. It's got structure, systems, and smarts. But the reusability part goes way beyond just saving money. This is about modularity. If something breaks in your Starship station, no problem. You bring it back to Earth, fix it, and launch it again. Try doing that with a chunk of the ISS. Spoiler, you can't. This alone is a game changer. Suddenly, space stations aren't these fragile, fixed-in-place behemoths. They're dynamic, upgradable, and way less risky. You're not just living in orbit, you're running a space ecosystem. And speaking of ecosystems, SpaceX isn't stopping at just the station. They've got the whole support squad ready to go. The Super Heavy Booster? That's your launch platform, currently the most powerful rocket in existence. Dragon capsules can resupply cargo. Starlink satellites handle your comms and data links, so your TikToks from orbit never buffer. Put it all together, and you don't just get a station. You get an interconnected orbital network, a full-blown space infrastructure run by one company. So how do you actually build this thing? SpaceX would probably follow their go-to playbook. Launch a Starship into orbit, then mod it like a cosmic Lego set. Strip out the fuel tanks, repurpose the guts, and start converting it into living space. Or here's an even cooler option. They could just build a dedicated Starship station variant from the start. Pre-outfitted on Earth, packed with everything needed for life in orbit, maybe even equipped with Dragon-style thrusters for station keeping. Launch it once, and you've got an orbital condo ready to go. Look, this isn't just blue sky dreaming anymore. With stainless steel, reusability, and a price tag that doesn't make governments cry. Starship-based stations aren't just possible, they're totally within reach. And if SpaceX pulls it off, this might be the first step toward making space home. For real. What do you think? Could Starship replace the ISS and kickstart a new age of orbital living? Let's chat in the comments, I'll be reading everyone. SpaceX Starship is a fully reusable, two-stage super heavy lift launch vehicle designed for carrying crew and cargo on long-duration missions to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Standing 120 meters tall, it uses powerful Raptor engines fueled by methane and oxygen, aiming to revolutionize space travel with high payload capacity and reusability.